A woman was at her hairdresser's salon, getting her hair styled for an upcoming trip to Rome with her husband. While getting her hair done, she started chatting with the hairdresser about her travel plans. Rome? Why would anyone want to go there? It's so crowded and dirty. You must be crazy to want to visit Rome. So how are you getting there? The hairdresser asked. We're flying with Continental. The woman replied cheerfully. We managed to get a really great rate on the tickets. Continental? That's one of the worst airlines. Their planes are old, their flight attendants aren't very pleasant, and they have a reputation for always being late. Anyway, where are you planning to stay in Rome? The woman, unfazed by the hairdresser's negativity, answered, We're booked at a small, exclusive hotel right by the Tiger River called Test. The hairdresser snorted dismissively, Oh, please, don't tell me anymore. I know that place. Everyone thinks it's going to be luxurious and exclusive, but trust me, it's a total dump. We're really excited about seeing the Vatican. We're even hoping we might get a glimpse of the Pope, the woman said optimistically. That's hilarious, laughed the hairdresser. You and a million other tourists will be there trying to see the Pope. He'll be so far away, he'll look like an ant. Honestly, good luck with this trip of yours. You're definitely going to need it. A month later, the woman returned to the salon for another hair appointment. The hairdresser, curious about the trip, asked her how it went. It was absolutely wonderful. The woman began with a bright smile. Our flight with Continental was amazing. The plane was brand new, and since it was overbooked, we were upgraded to first class. The service was impeccable, especially from a handsome, 28-year-old steward who attended to us the entire flight. And the hotel? It turned out to be stunning. They just completed a $5 million renovation. It's now the best hotel in the city. They were overbooked as well, so they upgraded us to the owner's suite at no extra cost. The hairdresser muttered, Well, that's nice and all, but I bet he didn't get to see the Pope. The woman's eyes sparkled as she replied, Actually, we were incredibly lucky. While touring the Vatican, a guard approached me. He explained that the Pope likes to meet some of the visitors and invited us to step into his private room to wait for a personal greeting. And can you believe it, just five minutes later, the Pope himself walked in and shook my hand. I knelt down and he spoke a few words to me. Intrigued, the hairdresser asked, Really? And what exactly did the Pope say to you? The woman grinned and replied, he said, who messed up your hair? A young doctor had recently moved to a small community, taking over the practice of a retiring older doctor. To help ease the transition and introduce the new doctor to the community, the older doctor suggested they make house calls together. At their first visit, they met a woman who complained of feeling slightly sick to her stomach. The older doctor, after listening to her, advised, You've probably been indulging a bit too much in fresh fruit. Why not reduce the amount you're eating and see if that makes you feel better? As they left the house, the younger doctor, curious and a bit perplexed, asked, You didn't even examine her. How did you diagnose her so quickly? The older doctor replied, I didn't need to examine her to know. Did you notice that I accidentally dropped my stethoscope on the floor? When I bent over to pick it up, I spotted a bunch of banana peels in her trash can. That's probably what's been making her stomach upset. Impressed, the younger doctor thought to himself, that's pretty clever. I'll have to try that technique at the next house. At the next house, they were greeted by an elderly woman who lamented about her lack of energy. I just don't have the energy I used to. I've been feeling terribly run down lately, she explained. The younger doctor quickly responded, you're probably doing too much work for the church. Maybe you should consider reducing your activities a bit and see if that helps you regain some energy. As they left the house, the older doctor, intrigued by the young doctor's swift diagnosis, asked, That seems like a likely diagnosis, but how did you come to that conclusion so fast? The young doctor said, Well, just like you at the previous house, I accidentally dropped my stethoscope. And when I bent down to pick it up, I noticed the preacher under the bed. As three women were walking down a bustling city street enjoying their day, a man conducting a survey stopped them. He was gathering people's opinions for a study he was doing and seemed quite enthusiastic about his work. He approached the women with a friendly demeanor and asked, Ladies, would you be willing to help me with my survey? I'm asking people how they determine if they've had a great night out. The first woman, with a thoughtful look, responded, Certainly. For me, it's quite straightforward. When I come home from a night out, I go straight to bed. If I lay there in bed and feel a delightful tingle all over my body, 
That's my sign that I had a really good night. The second woman, nodding in agreement with her friend, added her perspective. My experience is somewhat similar. After I get home, I like to take a relaxing shower and enjoy a glass of wine. Then I get into bed. If I'd experienced that same sensation of tingling all over, that's how I know my night out was a success. The third woman turned to the surveyor and said, If I get home, rip off my panties, throw them against the wall and they stick, then I know it was a good night. A Marine, after a long journey, arrived in a small town late in the evening. He was exhausted and in desperate need of a place to sleep. However, as his luck would have it, every hotel in the town was fully booked. Determined to find a place to rest, he approached the front desk of a local hotel with a plea. You better have a room somewhere, he implored the hotel manager. I really don't mind where I sleep, just a bed would be fine. The manager, empathizing with the Marine's plight, responded. Well, I do have one double room that's already occupied by a Navy guy. He might be willing to share the room and split the cost with you. But I must warn you, he has a problem with snoring. It's so loud that we've had complaints from the adjoining rooms in the past. I'm not sure if you'd find it tolerable. The Marine, too weary to be choosy, quickly assured the manager, no problem at all. I'm so tired, I'll manage just fine. I'll take the room. The following morning, the Marine appeared in the hotel's dining area for breakfast. He looked surprisingly fresh and well-rested. The manager, who was curious about how the Marine had managed to sleep, approached him and asked, How did you sleep last night? Did the snoring bother you at all? The Marine replied cheerfully, I slept wonderfully, thank you. The snoring wasn't an issue at all. Intrigued, the manager couldn't help but inquire further. That's remarkable. How did you manage to sleep with all that noise? The Marine chuckled and explained, Well, when I entered the room, the Navy guy was already fast asleep and snoring quite loudly. So I just walked over to his bed, gave him a gentle kiss on the cheek, and whispered, Good night, beautiful. And you know what? He spent the entire night sitting up and watching me. An elderly lady from Florida had just finished her shopping and was returning to her car in the bustling parking lot. To her shock and dismay, she found four men in the process of taking her vehicle. Without a moment's hesitation, she dropped her shopping bags and quickly drew her handgun. She shouted at the top of her lungs, I have a gun and I know how to use it. Get out of the car right now. The four men didn't need to be told twice. They scrambled out of the car and ran away as fast as they could, clearly terrified. Shaken but relieved, the lady then proceeded to gather her scattered shopping bags to load them into the back of the car. Still trembling from the adrenaline, she attempted to get into the driver's seat, but her hands were shaking so much that she couldn't fit the key into the ignition. She tried repeatedly, growing more frustrated and confused with each failed attempt. After a few minutes of struggling, a realization suddenly hit her. The car she was trying to enter wasn't hers. Embarrassed, she looked around and noticed her actual car, parked a few spaces down. She quickly gathered her belongings, moved to her real car, loaded her shopping bags, and drove straight to the police station to report what had happened. At the police station, she relayed the entire mix-up to the sergeant on duty. The sergeant listened with growing amusement and couldn't contain his laughter. He found the situation hilariously ironic. As he laughed, he pointed towards the other end of the counter. There, to the lady's astonishment, were the four pale and shaken men she had scared away. They were reporting a carjacking incident, describing their assailant as a mad elderly woman. She was characterized as being white, less than five feet tall, wearing glasses, with curly white hair, around 75 years old, and carrying a large handgun. A group of guys had a standing tradition where they would meet up every Friday after work for a relaxing drink and some camaraderie. This particular Friday, Jeff, one of the regulars, arrived noticeably later than usual. Without saying a word to anyone, he sat down at the bar and quickly downed his entire first beer in a single long gulp. The others could tell that something was bothering him. After finishing his beer, Jeff turned to his friend Bob, looking quite distressed. Times are really getting tough, my friend. You won't believe what's happening at home. I mean, just today my wife told me that she's going to cut me back to only two times a week. Can you believe that? I'm really shocked and don't know what to do. Bob patted Jeff on the shoulder and said, You think you've got it bad. She's cut some guys out altogether. 
At a social gathering, the wives of four men found themselves in a conversation about the different terms used for a manhood in their respective countries. The first wife, representing England, shared her input first. With a bit of a smile, she said, In England, we often refer to it as a gentleman, because it tends to stand up when women are entering the room. The second wife, representing Russia, added her perspective. In Russia, we refer to it as a patriot. This is because you never quite know if it will hit you from the front or sneak up on you from the back. The third wife, speaking for France, contributed her analogy. In France, we call it a curtain. This is because, similar to a curtain's role in a theater, it tends to go down after the performance is over. Finally, the fourth wife, representing the USA, shared her comparison. Well, in the USA, we often refer to it as a rumor, because it goes from mouth to mouth. In a train compartment, there are three men and a ravishing young girl. The atmosphere was initially quite ordinary until the young woman came up with a playful proposal. She sent with a hint of mischief. If each of you will give me one dollar, I will show you my legs. The men, clearly taken by the young girl's charm and beauty, quickly reached into their wallets and each handed her a dollar bill. In response, the girl modestly lifted her dress just enough to reveal her legs. The men were obviously delighted by this and eagerly anticipated what might come next. Then the girl, seeing the interest she had sparked, decided to raise the stakes. Now if each of you gentlemen will give me ten dollars, I'll show you my thighs. The men, not more enthused, didn't hesitate. Each one pulled out a ten-dollar bill and handed it over. True to her word, the girl then raised her dress further, revealing her thighs in full. The conversation among them continued, growing more lively by the minute. Caught up in the moment, all three men had removed their coats. Seizing the moment, the young woman then said, If you're willing to give me one hundred dollars, I will show you where I was operated on for appendicitis. Without a second thought, each man handed over one hundred dollars. With the money in hand, the girl turned towards the window of the train compartment and pointed outside at a distant building they were passing. She announced, See there in the distance. That's the hospital where I had it done. A successful ranch owner passed away, leaving all his possessions to his devoted and attractive wife. Determined to keep the ranch running but lacking knowledge in ranching, she decided to find some help. She placed an ad in the newspaper, seeking a ranch hand to assist with the daily operations. Her advertisement caught the attention of two individuals who came forward to apply for the job. The first applicant was a gay man, and the second was known for his drinking habits. After giving it considerable thought and realizing no one else was applying, she chose to hire the gay man. She figured it would be safer to have him around the house than the drunk. To her delight, he turned out to be an exceptionally hard worker. He put in long hours every day and demonstrated a surprising amount of knowledge about ranching. Together they worked diligently, and the ranch began to thrive under their combined efforts. After several weeks of continuous hard work, the widow approached the hired hand with a suggestion. You have done a remarkable job, and the ranch is looking fantastic, she commended. Why don't you take a break? Go into town and have some fun for a change. Grateful for the opportunity to relax, the hired hand took her up on the offer and headed into town that Saturday night. However, as the night progressed, he didn't return home at the expected time. One o'clock in the morning passed, then two, with no sign of him. Finally, around 2.30 in the morning, he returned to the ranch. Upon entering, he found the rancher's widow sitting by the fireplace, a glass of wine in her hand, evidently waiting up for him. In a calm and collected voice, she beckoned him over. Unbutton my blouse and take it off, she instructed him. The hired hand, visibly trembling, complied with her request. Now take off my boots, she continued. He carefully obliged, removing her boots slowly and placing them beside her. Now my socks, she said next. He gently removed each sock, placing them neatly by her boots. Please take off my skirt, she directed. He cautiously unbuttoned her skirt, all the while noticing her gaze fixed on the firelight. Now my bra, she added. With hands still trembling, he did as told, dropping it to the floor. After a pause, she looked at him and said, If you ever wear my clothes into town again, you're fired. A young man found himself on a massage table for a much-needed relaxation session. He was lying on his back, covered only by a towel draped over his groin area. His misuse for the day was a stunningly attractive young Swedish woman, whose skilled hands were expertly massaging his shoulders, 
then moving smoothly down to his chest and gradually working their way down his torso. As the massage progressed, the young man began to feel increasingly aroused, especially as the masseuse's hands got closer to the towel. The young man's excitement was becoming quite evident, and it wasn't long before the towel covering him started to lift, betraying his growing arousal. Noticing this, the Swedish girl raised her eyebrows. She paused her movements and looked directly at the young man. She asked, You want to jerk off? The young man replied with enthusiasm. You bet. The masseuse responded calmly, Okay, I'll come back in ten minutes. A woman returned home one day, visibly excited, and shared some surprising news with her husband. Remember those headaches I've been suffering from for all these years? They're completely gone now, she exclaimed. Her husband, intrigued and curious, asked, No more headaches? How did that happen? She explained, Well, our neighbor Margie recommended that I see a hypnotist. He gave me a simple exercise. He told me to stand in front of a mirror, look at myself, and keep repeating, I do not have a headache. I do not have a headache. I do not have a headache. And believe it or not, it actually worked. My headaches have vanished. The husband, impressed by this revelation, received a suggestion from his wife. You know, you haven't been quite enthusiastic in the bedroom over the past few years. Maybe you should see the hypnotist too, see if he can help with that. Motivated by his wife's improvement, the husband agreed to give it a try. After his appointment with the hypnotist, he returned home with a newfound vigor. Immediately, he passionately embraced his wife, carried her into the bedroom, and they shared an intimate and fiery moment like they hadn't had in years. Afterward, he told his wife, Don't move, I'll be right back, and went into the bathroom. He returned a few minutes later, and to his wife's amazement, they enjoyed another round of passionate lovemaking, even more intense than the first. The wife, both delighted and astonished, waited as her husband again said, Don't move, I'll be right back, before heading to the bathroom. This time curious about what he was doing, she quietly followed him. Peeking into the bathroom, she saw him standing in front of the mirror, repeating to himself, She's not my wife. She's not my wife. She's not my wife. His funeral services will be held on Friday. A young couple moved into their new home in a quaint neighborhood. The next day, as they settled into their morning routine, the young woman noticed something through the kitchen window while they were having breakfast. Looking outside, she saw her neighbor hanging laundry. Observing the laundry, she commended to her husband, That laundry doesn't look very clean. She doesn't seem to know how to wash properly. Maybe she needs to use a better brand of laundry soap. Her husband glanced over, saw the same scene, but chose not to comment on the matter. As days turned into weeks, each time the neighbor hung her wash to dry, the young woman would repeat her observations, criticizing the neighbor's laundry skills. She would make the same remarks about the cleanliness of the laundry, wondering why it never seemed to get any cleaner. About a month had passed when, one morning, the woman noticed a change. She saw her neighbor hanging out her wash, but this time, the clothes looked impeccably clean. Surprised and impressed, she pointed it out to her husband. Look, she's finally learned how to wash properly. I wonder who showed her the right way to do it. Her husband responded, I got up early this morning and cleaned our windows. A couple, who had been married for 30 years, had an unusual habit. Throughout their marriage, whenever they engaged in intimate activities, they always made sure to keep the lights off. The reason behind this was the husband's embarrassment and fear. He was worried he couldn't satisfy his wife so he always resorted to using a large dildo, thinking his wife would never find out. Over all these years, his wife was completely unaware of this secret. She never suspected anything and believed their love life was perfectly normal. However, one day, something changed. During one of their intimate moments, the wife, perhaps out of curiosity or a desire for a change, reached over and flipped the light switch on. To her utter surprise, she saw her husband with a dildo in his hand. Shocked and feeling deceived, she exclaimed, I knew it, you jerk. Explain the dildo right now. The husband retorted, Explain the kids. In a very exclusive private school near California's Silicon Valley, a third-grade teacher was lecturing her upper-high-class students about the less fortunate. She asked them each to write an essay about a poor family in the area. One little girl's paper began, Once upon a time, there was a poor family. The father was poor. The mother was poor. The children were poor. The nannies were poor. 
The pool man was poor. The personal trainer was poor. The gardeners were poor. This was a very poor family. A man was using a urinal in a public restroom when he noticed that a midget was observing him from a short distance away. Feeling a bit uneasy about being watched, he tried to focus on what he was doing. However, the midget soon broke the silence. Wow! Those are the nicest balls I have ever seen. The man, surprised and somewhat flattered by this unusual compliment, responded with a simple thank you and continued with his business. But the situation quickly took an even more bizarre turn. The midget, carrying a step ladder, placed it right next to the urinal where the man was standing. Climbing up, the midget said, Listen, I know this is a rather strange request, but since they're so admirable, I wonder if I could take a closer look. The man hesitated. However, seeing no real harm and perhaps out of a sense of curiosity about where this was going, he consented to the midget's request. As the midget leaned in for a closer inspection, he suddenly reached out and grabbed the man's balls firmly. In that instant, the midget, with a threatening tone, said, Okay, hand me your wallet, or I'll jump off the ladder. <laughs>